Um, we're here in uh, downtown LA today with Blake Leeper. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited to have him here today. Uh, Move With is all about people who are making moves and Blake embodies this more than <laughs> you know anyone we've met. And so Blake, just to get started, um, Last time I met Blake, he told me he wanted to run a sub 45, 400 meter. Um, and since then, can you just talk yeah, about like, what you've yeah. done? It was crazy because I remember we met in LA and uh, we, we had a cup of coffee and discuss, discussing, you know, like what my plans are, what I've been working for and, and what's my future goals. And, and at that time, you know, I've been training really hard, you know, I changed a lot of things in my life and on the track. And it had been going very well, so I kind of felt something big was going to happen. But my goal was around, you know, sub 45 seconds in the 400. At the time, um, my PR was a 45.2 mm -hmm. seconds, and then I ran a 45.05 mm -hmm. seconds. So I, it, it was it was near and dear there in sight. Um, but but that's, I mean, we're talking about track and field. A, a tenth of a second is so hard to conquer. Yeah. Um, so I knew it was coming, but I had to be patient with it. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been, I ran more races. I actually went out to Latvia. Uh, I was in Riga, Latvia, Eastern Europe, and I ran a 45 point three mm. seconds and then I that I was in Bermuda mm -hmm. um the week before that and I ran a forty five point two seconds and, and then again I'm like I'm so like, close yes, but yet so far. Yeah. Um and but I kept reminding myself and this is something that I learned in, in track and field and in life as well. When you have a goal and you set where you want to go and how far you want to take it. You know you have the talents, right? Mm -hmm. I've you know you've been working hard and you know you can accomplish it. Yeah. But it's just not having that breakthrough just yet yeah um one thing i've, I've, I've realized is being patient mm -hmm. and, and 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 staying true to yourself and, mm -hmm. and don't really go and start forcing things because yeah. i knew if i went and start forcing my races like i knew i had to go and have the time in my head but if i knew if i went out there and started forcing my races mm -hmm. now i was going to go start backtracking that means i'm going to yeah. start tensing up that means mm -hmm. i was going to start overthinking the runs mm -hmm. that means i'm not i'm still gonna start doubting yeah you know what i mean my talents you know what I mean? My work ethic and all the time and energy that me and my coaches have put in. So by staying patient in the process, you're yeah. you're, you're trusting um, not only yourself, but you're, 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 you're trusting the people around you. Mm -hmm. you're, you're trusting your work ethic. You're trusting and staying true to the grind and to yourself. And so right before I went out to the race in Prague, um, you know what I mean? It, it was it was a it was a out of body experience even before the race because mm -hmm. I, I was filming the track. I was I was feeling how I was feeling. You're you know in what I mean? Body. Yeah, my body was in tune with myself. Mm -hmm. My body was telling me in my mind. My mind was telling myself that this is your moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't overthink it, but this is your moment. Um, and so right before the race start, I was having a conversation with another athlete, and I was like, you know what? The the main word uh, to think about during this is execute. Mm -hmm. Execution is 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 key mm -hmm. for me right now. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's all I need to do. I don't need to run faster than I've been running. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need to overthink what I've been overthinking. Just execute the movement mm -hmm. that you've been preparing and doing day in and day out for this moment. And that's what I did. A gun goes off. I get out. And of course, as a blade runner, missing both of my legs. And I'm running against the fastest you know, European runners with legs. They take off. You know what I mean? And, and normally that I would you know, what I mean? get scared and tense up. So I need to catch up. I need to catch up. But in my head, it was execution execution so I just stay patient stay patient within the run trusting you know what I mean my talents trusting my abilities and I started picking up speed and picking up speed um, until we got to the 200 meter mark and, and it's like something took over me and I was like I feel like I got a burst of energy another yeah. burst of energy I just took off until the, the, we was at the top of the curve of the 250 that I passed everybody until we got to the last 100 meters of the, uh, of the 400 meter race at the 300 meter mark and I just yeah, the crowd was going crazy I couldn't see nobody in sight and I was like okay I'm really I'm running really really fast right now but I don't know how fast I'm running and I just started pumping my arms as fast as possible and, and I just went for it mm -hmm. and I started running as hard as I can as fast as I can that last 100 meters until I crossed the line and I, and I looked up and I seen 44.4 seconds 40. 44.42 Seconds. Well under yeah. <laughs> Well under I mean, forty five. Tenth of a second is hard. Yeah, yeah, tenth yeah. of a second hard and I PR by almost a half of a second, more than a half of a second. And, and, and can you tell people like what does that mean? Like now last time I spoke with you, 
you were ranked eighth yes. in the country, which yes. is across all able bodied yes, yes, athletes. Yes, and now, yeah, they put what? me they put me like eighth in the country. Um the, the last time was like eight, I was like eighth in the country, uh, you know, it's like top fifteen, you know what yeah. I mean, top twenty in the world, like maybe eighteenth, nineteenth in the world. Um with that forty five forty four point four, um that actually put me third in the country, um and eighth in the world. Um, and, and it was pretty cool. NBC Sports uh, released an article, you know, Yahoo Sports, and, and, and the title of the article, which was, I think was pretty amazing, was, you know, U.S. amputee runs a fast enough time that would have made the Olympic Games in 2016. So if I, if I would have run that time last year or the year before or, or continue to run this time, then I have a, a really legitimate high shot of making the U.S. Olympic team against able-bodied runners and, and trying to battle to say you know what I mean I want to be the fat try to be the fastest man to have the title as one of the fastest men in the world or the fastest man in the world you know what I mean yeah. who's to say I, I I can't do it you know what I yeah. mean like I, I talk about it and I manifest it mm -hmm. and I set that as my goal but when they like we was just talking when it becomes a reality it's like an out of body experience like mm -hmm. whoa I actually have this in me you know what I mean and then as an athlete I'm like okay if I have this in me hmm what else do I what have, baby? How, how far can can I really take it? And and, yeah. and that just goes back to you never want to set boundaries on yourself. Mm. You know what I mean? You mm -hmm. never want to set boundaries on yourself. Like, don't put yourself in a box. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, don't think you cannot do this or you cannot do that or you're not able to accomplish this because we as humans, we, we have supernatural ability. And if yeah. we put that out there, and, and trust that and believe in that, you, you your results could be can blow your own mind, right? Yeah. What you can accomplish can blow your own mind. It's it's like so I mean it just gives me chills <laughs> you talking about it. And like I mean talk about how you were born without legs yes. and here you are, the third fastest man in the country, eighth in the world, like how, how did you get <laughs> from how you were born to yeah, here? Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. You know what I mean? Born with a, a congenital birth defect, similar hemophilia, to where both of my legs didn't develop um, as a baby in, in my mother's womb. To, but it was like late '80s, early '90s. So pediatric orthopedics was just getting started. Thank goodness the weather was still a little experimenting. Didn't know everything, but at least there there was testing things and trying things to where I could live a, a fulfilled life to where. I was wearing prosthetic legs at nine months mm. um, to where, I mean, even though the doctors did have that conversation with my mother and my father, Mr. and Mrs. Leeper, I'm sorry, but Blake is born missing both of his legs. And mm -hmm. if statistically, if you look at the history of kids being born without legs, it's not looking good for him. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can imagine for my parents, you know what I mean? My father loves sports. I have, a, I have an older brother, two years older than me, mm -hmm. who was born completely healthy. and. And you know what I mean? I can imagine their expectations as, as young parents, you know what I mean? And put in this situation, their baby boy, you know, Blake being born with that legs was, was probably extremely hard for them. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I thank God daily that they was they stayed strong within their self mm -hmm. um, and in their faith, knowing that, okay, we're put in a situation, but we, if we stick together as a family mm -hmm. and we stick together as a unit and, and we, we enter this with a positive attitude, you know what I mean? Look at the glass half full instead of half empty. Yeah. To say, look, this is what Blake has. You know what I mean? What are our options? You know what I mean? We and do they just focus on, like, what do we have? What do we time? have? What, what We got to make the most out of the situation and yeah. not really dwell in what I was missing. Yes, right. I was missing my legs, but I still had spirit. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I still had, you know what I mean? I still had the, the, the will to, to be, nor, you know what I mean, a normal human being or the will to walk. Yeah. Um, and, and with that mindset, I grew up as a kid not knowing anything different. Mm. You know what I mean? I, they didn't treat me any, any way different just because I have a disability or just because right. I was missing my legs. They didn't give me the easy way out or they didn't mm. take it easy on me. They knew that Blake is going to live a fulfilled life. So we have to push him just as much or even harder mm -hmm. as we do our, our older son, Chris, or the other kids just so he doesn't grow up thinking that he can take the easy road out. Um, and, yeah. and that's the unfortunate part when you deal with something like a tragedy or a disability. Mm -hmm. People start treating you a little bit different. They feel sorry for you. Mm -hmm. And that's just human nature. You know what I mean? They yeah. just want to be there for you. They want to help you. But in some instances, it's almost a bad thing because yeah. because you don't learn how to fight. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If everybody's doing everything for you, then, then you don't I, have to fight. You don't have to fight. And, and yeah. life is about fighting. You know what I mean? Success is, is your your success is not determined by all the accolades or 
how many times you're on TV or how many medals or awards you get. Your success is determined by when you get knocked down, Mm -hmm. right? And you're down and out and you're stripped from nothing and you still fight and you keep pushing through. That's the the, the true definition of a champion. I totally agree. Yeah, it's it's amazing to, to be where I'm at now. And how old were you when you first started running? Um, I mean, I played sports growing up my whole life, basketball and baseball, um, even t-ball, and I played all the way up to my varsity you know, basketball team. I didn't start running track and field until I was 18, 19 years old. I didn't get my blades until I was 18, 19 years old. Mm. <clears throat> so this whole time, I was thinking I could maybe take it to the highest level or take it to the next level, but it wasn't until I got the running prosthetics and, I, and the first time I, you know, was on, you know, I never forget my, my process, put the legs together, and I was about 19 years old, and he gave me this big, long speech about how it's going to take, like, three months for you to, like, figure this out, and most people fall down the first time they try to run on these these prosthetic legs, and they're very diff- difficult, very difficult to figure these things out, so don't, don't be discouraged Yeah. Um, if you don't get it the first time. I'm like, okay, okay, give me my leg, give me my leg, All right, okay, okay, <laughs> cool, cool, yeah, I got this, I've been waiting for this my whole life. So we go to the track, and, and I'm, I'm walking the curb, and, and I'm, I'm a little nervous, and I, my mom, my dad, and my prosthetist and his wife is out there, my dad's recording, recording the whole time to see what's gonna happen. I'm on the other end by myself, and I'm walking the curb a little bit, and I, by the time I get on the straight, I started jogging, and, by the time halfway down the street, I'm, I'm, I'm full blown sprinting. Wow. I'm, out. I'm sprinting full out. And I'll never forget the way the wind was hitting my face. Mm. Right? I've never been that fast ever yeah. a day in my life. 18 years, 19 years on this on this world. And I, I, that was the fastest I've ever been. And what and were you feeling? I felt free. Mm. Nothing mattered. You know what I mean? My disability didn't matter. Just, you know what I mean? The school didn't matter. Yeah. You know what I mean? All the failures, all all the laughs and the point. Every time I got pointed at and laughed at, every time my leg fell off. You know what I mean? Every every question or what, how you know what I mean? What what am I gonna do with my life? Or you know what I mean? Am I gonna be successful? How am I going to conquer this? None of that. None of that mattered in that mm. moment. Only thing that I cared about is how fast I was going, and I fell in love with that. Yeah, I was like this with that is, feeling. But that feeling. You know, of like, freedom. Of freedom. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, this is what I want. Like, you're free now as a runner. Yes. So, let's talk about how do you prepare? Like, what does a day in the life of Blake Leaper look like? Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, a day of a life of, of, of Blake Leaper is, is busy. <laughs> uh, um, really busy, but in a good way. Mm. Um, and, and, and it goes back to where I, I asked myself, you know what I mean? I have this in this conversation with with myself. As crazy as it sounds, Blake Lieber talks to Blake Lieber. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whether I'm writing it down, I'm meditating, mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm praying, or, or just, you know what I mean, just sitting in, in, in silence asking myself, which I constantly do, and I encourage everybody to do, to always write mm-hmm. and always meditate and, and always plan out. But it starts out with a conversation with myself. What, what do you want to accomplish? Like, what do you want to get done? Today. Yeah, today. You know what I mean? What is your, your goal today? What is your goal for the next five years? What is your ultimate goal? You know what I mean? So, and, and for me, my ultimate goal is, is is to be one of the fastest men in the world. And that's the, when you, once you have that conversation, you say, okay, this is what it is. So, and then I have, you have this manifestation to where you manifest that. You put that out into the universe to say, this is what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. This is what I want to do. Mm-hmm. And once you put that out there into the world, it's out there. It can't be taken taken back in it. As you know, reality is what what we make it. We totally. perceive life. So if we can yeah. create our own reality, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? What happens is once you start manifesting things, you start conforming to that and, and yeah. figuring this out. And that goes back to my day. So I, for me, mm. I am trying to be an Olympic runner, the one of the fastest men in the world to qualify for the Olympic Games on prosthetic legs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so... <laughs> What is that entitled? Um, I mean, so I look at my advantage, my advantage, and my disadvantage. Mm-hmm. You know, my disadvantage, I am missing my legs. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I'm gonna have to work just maybe a little bit harder than the average runner, yeah. um, just because of the things that I'm missing. Mm-hmm. My advantage is I know life isn't fair because mm-hmm. I was born without legs. So if I, so I, I have this, this moment of gratefulness, and I'm so thankful. I'm so grateful. 
that I can even wake up and put my legs on and walk. Mm. Step one. Mm -hmm. I am happy and I am thankful that I am walking without any soreness. One, I am can even stand. Two, mm -hmm. and I have the proper devices to even go to the trek. Yeah. Drive there. You know what I mean? I have the resources. I've been to countries, third world countries, to where people look at my legs and say, Oh my gosh, that those are amazing. I can wish the only dream I had something like that. And I'm just like, what, these these things? <laughs> but that put it in perspective for my oh, yeah. I gotta be thankful for what I have. So mm. this this level of gratitude mm. that you that I have, that's my advantage. Yeah. Through 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 what some people think was my disadvantage being born with that leg. Like, oh my gosh, she's born with that leg. This is horrible. You know what I mean? That's a disadvantage to the average person. But I flip that mm. and use that as my advantage because that, that humbles me yeah. every single morning saying, this is my situation. I have to be thankful for it, for being able to walk and go to the track to run. Yeah. Step one. Step two is I go to the track to train as mm -hmm. hard as I can. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm at the track, you know what I mean, six days a week. Um, running for three to four hours a day, wow. um, trying to perfect my craft. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I'm doing endurance workouts, speed endurance workouts, mm -hmm. speed workouts, working on my blocks. I'm working on my curves. I'm trying to get my hips stronger. I'm trying mm -hmm. to get my legs stronger. I'm trying to figure out the right position in, 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 my, in my arms. And I'm trying to figure all of this out because I'm trying to be the best in the world. Yeah. So I got to worry about the guy in China. I got to worry about the guy in Japan, South Africa. I got to worry about the guy in Zimbabwe. I gotta, if I want to be the best in the world, I can have no holes in my craft, which I know I'm not going to be perfect. So the only way I can walk away with confidence, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, saying that, okay, I'm in the right position. I got to do as much as I can possible. So it starts with the track, with my teammates, with my coach, you know what I mean? And, and we go there laughing you know what I mean? we're always joking that's that's rule number one whatever <laughs> you're doing fun. you gotta have fun you mm -hmm. gotta have fun find fun within it because mm -hmm. i mean if you, if it starts becoming a job you know what i mean mm -hmm. you start losing the the passion for it yeah then you're not going to get the best results mm -hmm. you're going to show up and give 70 percent mm -hmm. you're going to show up and give 50 percent or 80 percent one day and if you're not giving 120 percent why are you even doing it? Yeah. What's the point? Yeah. Why, why, why are you you're wasting not only your time, but you're wasting the people around you's time? Mm -hmm. So if you're not in there all, if you're not all in, just just stop. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's the reality because you're not going to get the results that you want out of it. Yeah. And you're not going to take it to the top and you're going to be stuck in this realm. It's always going to be the same results and the same thing because you're doing the same thing because you're not all in. Yeah. So when we go to the track, you got to have fun. You're laughing. So we, when it's time to get serious, we can go all in. So I'm not driving the track like, oh, not another practice. Yeah, I gotta, yeah. Go, to oh, I gotta go to the track. <laughs> no, I wake up like, oh, let's go. I can't wait to see these guys. And I can't wait to tell them this joke. And I, I'm about to get a great workout. And I can't wait to better myself. Like, that's 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 my mindset. You know what I mean? Yeah. At, at, at 7 o'clock in the morning. I, I, as can, as a, I can kind of imagine Yeah, that. <laughs> as I'm pouring my coffee. You know what I mean? Walking my dog. Like, oh, I can't wait. Like, I'm like a Christmas. Like a kid on Christmas. You know, like that day before Christmas. And you know you're about to get, you know, Santa Claus just came. And you're so excited you can't sleep. Like, that's the feeling that I get every wow. day going to the track to better wow. myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's taken ups and downs and, 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 and failures and, and mistakes to, to get to this moment. Like, I wasn't born with that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I had to live life to get that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and go through and maneuver through life to, to finally be here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? In this moment, I'm thankful that I found, found that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's the be Like, it's not a job for me. Mm. It's not a job. Running's not a job for me. Yeah, it's, it's a blessing for me. You know what I mean? I'm and that thankful. is your advantage. And then that's my and that's the advantage. Um, and, and from the track, I, I'm there for about twelve, one o'clock. Um, and from there, I even go stop by and see my sports psychologist. Mm. Uh, and what a lot of people don't realize, you know, you physically, you know what I mean. You could be great, but with track and field and a lot of things in life, you gotta be you gotta be mentally prepared for it. And, yeah. And if you're not out there talking to somebody, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and discussing on your ideas, and you keep it balled up yeah. in your head, it's gonna stay in your head, and mm -hmm. it, it can destroy you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I, I go to my sports psychologist, you know what I mean? And, and it, sometimes we don't even talk about sports. <laughs> we don't even yeah. talk about sports. I just, I, I talk about life. Mm -hmm. I talk about what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm talking about my, sometimes my insecurities. Yeah. I talk about, you know what I mean? And he's just there to bounce, I'm there to bounce it off with him. And, 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 and he's there to reiterate that, you know what? Remember, life is good. 
Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Don't forget. And I have these struggles, even you know, yeah. I mean, with the advantage that it's I have. It, but it's human nature, yeah. and it's okay to mm-hmm. feel down. Mm-hmm. I realize it's okay to feel sad sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, it's okay to feel scared mm-hmm. sometimes. It's okay to have fear. Yeah. You know, what I mean, in certain situations, but mm-hmm. it, it, it's not okay to live in it. Mm-hmm. It's not okay to stay in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's where it gets scary. You just, know what to mean? Acknowledge just to acknowledge it. Just to acknowledge it. You know what I mean? It, it, you have to acknowledge it. You have to identify it. You have to identify the problem. You have to acknowledge the problem so you can come to a solution. Yeah. Um, so I take all my problems and sit there and I do that after, you know, once or twice a week um, after my practice. Then from there I have a lunch. And from lunch, I go back to the weight room for another training session. Mm. Um, and when I'm training with, with my other coach, Johan, um, where we're just like meeting. And I'm his first amputee he's ever trained. He's 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 a, he's a personal trainer and he's done fitness competitions and he's worked with some top notch people from Iceland and he mm. came to LA to to take his career to the next level and um I, we we met cross paths through manage, management and you know what I mean he's like look I've never worked with a, with an amputee before but I do know how to get strong and and and, and bigger and, and strength. Yeah. And I was like cool I've never you know really focused on on weight lifting but you know what I mean I know how to run. He's like so we just started from from scratch. Mm-hmm. And, and we, it's been we've been taking about two the past couple of years trying to figure this out because there's no really a foolproof plan for an amputee who's trying to run 44 seconds at 400 right. meters because there's never been an amputee able to run 44 43 and can seconds. You, what's different like from a strength training perspective what's harder for you man i mean for me it's, it's stability it's mm-hmm. the balance you know what i mean like because i am missing my lower part of my limbs it, I can't just put weights, heavy weights on and go squat. Right. You know what I mean? We, he has to find the proper position for me to where I feel comfortable enough. If I go too low or I hit a certain position and just because I'm stiff mm-hmm. from the knee down, my leg will buckle and just give out on me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I have to find that proper stability, that happy medium to where I can drop down on the weights and hold them and push back. So, so we had to start from scratch. No weights mm-hmm. at all. And he just had to walk through every workout and just do a check and minus box. Can you do this? No. Can you do that? Yes. How does this feel? Okay, great. How heavy can we go on this? And then once we found that foundation of yeah. saying, okay, we can do A, B, C, and D, this is beneficial, then we just started loading the weights up. Loading the weights up to the point to where I maxed out on a, it, it was a Smith machine squat, but we got up to, we was putting up 350 pounds on a Smith Smith machine squat, squatting, just wow. getting stronger to where when I started, I could only do, you know what I mean, 150 pounds, 160 pounds, but it's just mm-hmm. that consistency, yeah. you know what I mean, showing up every single day in the, on the track to, you know, my, my, my sports psychologist, my, mm-hmm. my, my, my weight room coach, Johan, just mm-hmm. showing up, and, and even some days I have good days, sometimes mm-hmm. I have bad days, it's bad days, but that feeling when I'm out there on the track, and I run really fast, or mm. I'm out there, you know what I mean, somewhere in life, and, and and somebody maybe recognizes me, or a kid, or I'm able to do a speech and say, I, you know, I'm, I'm one of the fastest men in the world, and a little kid that is out there comes up to me mm. and, and gives me that look, it's like, wow, you're, 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 you're so awesome, like, thank you for your inspiration, yeah. you know what I mean, I thought this. And now I see your life and see what you're able to accomplish. Now I know I can do that. Mm. That's the greatest feeling in the world. That and that's purpose. That's purpose. And that makes it worth it. You yeah. know what I mean? I'll, I'll be in bed at 8 o'clock every night. You know what I mean? If I have to, to get that feeling, right? Mm. To knowing that and at the end of the day, I'm a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. My life is a sacrifice mm. for the next generation. Mm-hmm. My life is a sacrifice to, to, for, to give hope. You know what I mean? For somebody who needs hope. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For somebody who needs that inspiration, who think that I cannot, you know what I mean? Look Mm -hmm. at my life saying, I was born without legs and now I'm running all around the world against the fastest runners in the world, trying to be the fastest man in the world. What is, what, you can do anything. And so at the end of the day, this isn't just for you, right? It's not for me. It's not for me. This is. At all. It's for for somebody else. Mm -hmm. It's for that next person who needs to hear my story. Mm -hmm. And and for that, that means I have to show up at the track every day. I I have to train as hard every day. I have to give 120% every day so I can become the fastest man in one one lap around the track. That's my goal. By doing that, then I have an opportunity to give that hope. 
Mm. I have that opportunity to give that inspiration to, yeah. to change lives and to change perception and perspective of what they thought was possible or impossible and now they can think it's possible. I would say you're already doing that. Yeah, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> but yeah, I hope but so. I'm looking forward yeah, to that day. Yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> you spend, as you just articulated, all of this time training yes. to show up on the day of the race <laughs> and run. So what do you do like when you have to be on? Oh. And what do you do? Like do you have a ritual? Like how do you how do you get yeah. yourself to that place? Yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. I've, I've been kind of finding myself a little bit. It's um you know, it, you it's funny, I've I've I flown to Japan, you know what I mean, this past couple of months. Uh, it was a sixteen hour flight mm-hmm. and I was running a hundred meter race for a ten second race. I ran ten point nine. So I was actually like I was there for sixteen hours on a plane, <laughs> there for three days for ten seconds mm-hmm. when there was ten thousand people in the stands. And it's like how do you channel that yeah. for that moment? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Because you're having an autobike experience, you're everywhere, you're jet lagged, you maybe mm-hmm. you're not accustomed to the food, so you haven't been eating that well. You know what I mean? You know what yeah. I mean? You get a little nervous. The race is normal. Like, majority of my races are at night. So mm-hmm. I'm like sitting in the room, you know what I mean, all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, so one thing, I, you know what I mean, I, like, I was in Prague this past couple of days. So, you know what I mean, one thing I t- started telling myself when I started traveling these countries, I do need to take a day to mm-hmm. go out and just experience the city. Don't worry about the, don't worry about yeah. the track meet. Don't, you know what I mean? Don't worry about the times. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't worry about your competitors. Don't worry about you do good or bad. Just enjoy yourself have fun yeah right because we get, get somewhere oh, i'm gonna do this like I, you know the night before it's so hard for me to sleep mm-hmm. for a race every race i don't care if it's 10 people in the stands or ten thousand people in the stands or eighty thousand. Yeah. it's just so hard for me to sleep i've worked so hard for this totally. i mean I, yeah, this is the moment that's when the adrenaline and all of that's kicking in Come, comes in and so I, i'll go out and try to experience the city the day before don't walk to it it's a double-edged sword because you don't want to tie yourself out right. but you want to experience it so i went out and Walked the city and went to this amazing cathedral and took pictures mm-hmm. and, and and got a good lunch and hung out with other athletes and just talked about everything except for except for track. <laughs> um, and then the day of, that's when it gets serious. So you know, my, my ritual is you know I get up in the morning um, and I have breakfast of course. Then then I, I go back and I try to I try to take a nap. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? I try to just sleep. Just mm-hmm. I meditate a little bit. I have this moment of peace. And, 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 and quietness to, to hone in my energy and just kind of meditate and just bring it in deep breathing just mm-hmm. kind of be one within myself you know mm-hmm. what I mean to try to channel that to find myself to, mm-hmm. to, to, and, that, and as I slow down I wake up Yes. I have this 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 level of awareness mm-hmm. of was I, I turn off the TV, I, I turn off my phone, and, I, and all these things as distractions, mm-hmm. right? And I and I, and I, I channel my, my inner strength, you know mm-hmm. what I mean, my inner, mm-hmm. inner spirituality, and I wake up, and I, I have this conversation with myself, like you know why we're here, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, you know how important this could be, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, you know how this race could change not only your life. But a lot of people's lives, mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Don't overthink this, but this is this is important. Yeah. You know what I mean. This is very important. And then that, as I have that level of awareness, you know what I mean. I come back into it, and I just try to go through my routine. Mm-hmm. And then I try to take it, like as I'm sleeping, and I do this in my in my sleep, um, or just or as I'm getting prepared for the race, I try to go through the race mm-hmm. in my head mm-hmm. from getting into the blocks. Yeah. Right, the gun going off. What am I going? You know what I mean. The first time I try to visualize, like literally, see, I can see this in my. I can, I can, I can tell you who's in the stands. Who I can tell you the, what the guy in lane, lane four, and I'm in five is wearing. What yeah. color? You know what I mean. The, the, I gotta, I gotta visual. I gotta be able to see this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. I gotta mm-hmm. be able to see this. Step one, step two, step three. And sometimes I get to like in a 400 meter race in my head as I'm visualizing this way before the track meet. This yeah. is like four hour, five hour before the track meet. If I get to 120 meters, it gets fuzzy. I stop. I go back from the beginning mm. and start visualizing this. You know what I mean? Then, then I get to 200 meters. Wow. It gets a little fuzzy. You know what I mean? I can't see it. Yeah. And, and, and I stop. So and, and actually, you know what I mean? I'm not recalling this because this moment has not even happened yet. Right. A moment like this has happened, but mm-hmm. this moment at this track meet in, in this country, you know what I mean? With this amazing time that I'm about to run with these competitors, never happened. And if I'm going through this in my head, that means I'm manifesting this. Yeah. And what I'm manifesting is that perfect race for that moment. Mm. Not a PR, not 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 the world record, yeah. just that perfect race in that moment. 
You know what I mean? Day. Have an album this day of execution. So it really is not a time on it. Yeah. It's just I'm worrying about my execution of what my movement, what I'm doing is to stay calm through this to where hopefully I can get around the track the whole time as through my visualization to mm-hmm. say I've had that race. Sometimes I'm first. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Who's on the left? Who's on the right? So what happens is once I get into the race, yeah, I have this moment of like, whoa, I've been here before. Yeah. Oh, I, I know what to do. It's the uh, out of body experience. Like, oh gosh, I've never been here before. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Like, I've been here before. I felt like I have deja vu, almost. So I get to the track. Then once I get to the track, I kind of go into my mode. I have my playlist. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's on your playlist? Oh man, so much. I'm like all over the place. Like, you know what I mean? On the way, you know what I mean? I'm listening to like Drake. You know what I mean? <laughs> nice. Like, take care. I'm like in my feelings. You know what I mean? <laughs> Trying to stay calm. I'm like, I, I got Usher on. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like. In this R and B mode, so you're, you're like, yeah, dancing. I'm like singing. You know what I mean? Like I'm on the bus, just like I don't want to like I realize, I don't want to be too too amp too too fast. It has timing is everything. So I like as a kid when I was younger, I used to like start the day off with Little John like in the East Side Boys and just like was like vibing on the like. So by the time I got to the track meet, I was exhausted from the music. Like, I was like so tired. Like oh my god, I gotta run. I was just jamming out for like two hours straight. This is not okay. Um, so so you, it's perfectly crafted. Yes, yeah, it's to perfectly build. crafted to build mm-hmm. through my because we have to control our emotions and, and and as you know with music is is we can control our emotions through what we put in our ears. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean and what, how and what was going through those vibes and those frequencies through our ears. So I have to channel that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean and and slowly build on that. Okay, this is where I'm mm-hmm. at. You know what I mean. And then as I get to the track. Um, I kind of get to this philosophical, you know what I mean, deep rap, you, you, you know what I mean, like Chance the Rapper, you know what I mean, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean, that likes to spit, you know what I mean, talk out of things about Kendrick Lamar, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, it's not really, you know what I mean, getting excited, but it's just like speaking truth, and, yeah. and you know what I mean, real. yeah, real, most deaf, yeah. and, and, and then common, mm-hmm. and stuff like that as I'm analyzing, you know what I mean, like the, what, what I'm doing and, and sizing people up, then as I start my warm up, the little John comes on. <laughs> <laughs> little John and the East Side Boys come on. Uh, you know what I mean? All the down south, like amigos. And, you know, you know what I mean? Like all these like southern rappers is you know, good beats like Ice Cube and, and all you know what I mean? Get Your me roots. Like, my roots where I'm just like I'm I'm feeling myself and it, and it's interesting because some athletes, you know, they listen to music but they're like so focused and you know what I mean don't want the other person and I'm like in my blades you know what I mean with I'm the only dude out there on prosthetics and I'm just like <laughs> vibing and jumping up and down and people looking at me like yo this this dude's crazy but I'm in my zone yeah. can't get nobody get I don't care what people think about me mm. and, that, and that's that's this is my advantage yeah I'm already getting looked at mm. I've been looked I've been getting looked at since, since the day I was born so I've, I've yeah. been pointed at I've been laughed at, I've been joked at, so there's not much more I can do, you know what I mean, yeah. to, to where if I feel like, oh, maybe I should, I don't, I don't, I don't want to feel weird, so I'm just going to just stay here, and like, mm-hmm. no, I'm like, you already going to look at me. Yeah. So if you're going to look at me, I'm like, cool. I'm just like, and they're just me. like, I'm just going to be me, so that yeah. allows me to channel a whole nother level, because I don't care what, no, but I already know they're going to look at me. I already know they're going to talk about me. All right, because I'm, I'm doing something nobody's really seen before. I'm running on prosthetic legs. Yeah. So that that far, I passed that. I'm mm-hmm. just going to my zone. I'm going to my happy place. You know, <laughs> I'm going to play my little John and, and, and bob my head. And, and that allows me to go to a whole nother level that they're not on right now. Yeah. So I have the advantage before the before the, the track meet even starts. Mm-hmm. Um, and something new that I started doing, it, was, it just happened... You know what I mean? Just randomly, my, my music kind of stopped, and I had some instrumentals mm. um, on my on my uh, playlist, and that's the only thing I was playing. I was kind of like, oh, I was kind of mad, but I was like, okay, make the best out of the situation. So what I started doing right before the race, I'll play an instrumental, and I'm not a rapper by any means, but I tried. I started having a cipher with my own self about wow. the race of how I'm going to execute this race. You're storytelling. I'm storytelling in my race through a cipher with myself, like okay. A, B, C, I'm gonna do, you know what I mean? It's, it's very horrible. It, it, I would never, you know what I mean? Like, I, I would never record this. I would never go in the booth to, to <laughs> just drop these hot, I make you do that these, these hot 16 bars, you know what I mean? But it's just, and I'm like, and I hit, it kind of hit me like, if I could rap, what I'm going to do off the top of my head. Mm. It's like, that's what the race is. Mm. You know what I mean? Just reacting, you know what I mean? To yeah. certain situations. And I'm just, once again, manifesting 
what I'm going to do right. And what I'm rapping is nothing but positive, good mm. energy out there of what I'm going to do and how I'm going to execute my race. And it's kind of fun. <laughs> right? I'm a, so I'm like in the corner with myself, just like going into my eight mile mode. Like, you know what I mean? My arms are sweating. And he's like, what? You know what I mean? I'm right, right. Like, dude, go sit down somewhere. But I'm like, it, it helps me. Mm. It really, it, it helps. It works. Yeah. For me to where I'm like, and I'm like laughing at myself, I'm having a good time, and I'm working on something about my execution with my race as I'm rhyming during this cypher of this yeah. random instrumental that I put on. And it, it actually I works. Yeah, that. it's crazy. It, it, it's crazy. It's intense. Wow. <laughs> that is awesome. And then you run. <laughs> then I go run. And then I go execute. And then I go, and, and like I said, the results. Like, it's, it's interesting. Um, my first race, my best race of this season, uh-huh. right, um, was actually my slowest time of the year. Mm. I ran, I ran forty-five-seven. That was my first four hundred of the year, mm-hmm. and but that was my foundation to my mm. season because I said I came out here and I knew I wasn't ready to go forty-four then. You know yeah. what I mean? The first race of the year, I'm rusty, mm. but I went to my coach, and my teammates, and it's like, what's the game plan? And it's like, okay, I want you to hit this time. I want you to execute. I want you to come through. 21 high, maybe 22 two, then come back, be you know what I mean, comfortably and, and work on that. And I yeah. went out there and did that. Mm. You know what I mean? Came through and hit 22 perfect. Mm. And came back and hit 23 five perfect. I executed my plan. Yeah. And that gave me the foundation from that point of confidence. Yeah, of confidence to say, mm. I can do what I set out to do. Mm. And my slowest time gave me the most confidence. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. To give me that 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 foundation to I'm gonna do this every race, and that's what I've been doing ever since in that race, that race, that race, and was patient through the process of waiting for that right moment, yeah. on the right time, on the with the right track. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Waiting for my moment. Mm-hmm. So we sometimes get impatient, yeah, right? Because we know we have the talents, mm-hmm. we know we have it, and we we, we deserve it. We, I want it You're today. Like, will your way? I, I want to yeah. will my way. I want it today. <laughs> But sometimes the universe says, it's not your time today. Yeah. It's your time. I got something bigger and better for you. Mm. You know what I mean? I got something way bigger. If you can just stay patient. Yeah. And, and trust the process. Mm-hmm. What I have for you mm-hmm. will blow your mind when it happens when it, at the right moment. Yeah. But if you force it, it's not going to be the best. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you force it, you mm-hmm. might get, see a snippet of it, but it's not, not what you truly can be and blossom into. God, yeah, that is crazy. refreshing. <laughs> so you're you're on Move With, you're yes. on Instagram, you're in all sorts of yes. places. But how can people get more of you? Like, how can they channel this excitement yes. yeah. into their lives? And, and, and that's what it is, and that's why I really enjoy the, the, when you guys approach me with this Move With platform. Mm-hmm. Um, we had this conversation. Like, I, like, this is this is it. Mm-hmm. I'm able to. You can take this journey with me because I'm learning on a daily basis, mm-hmm. and I'm giving this information back. Not only through, you know what I mean, the talks, but the workouts as well to how to better yourself with mm-hmm. your life, your well-being through this Move With platform. And yeah. that's why I support it. And that's why I stand by it because mm-hmm. it's so important because I feel like mm-hmm. together, you know what I mean, we can change lives. You yes. know what I mean? There's so many amazing athletes that mm-hmm. and, and coaches mm-hmm. and, and trainers and chefs that's come aboard on the Move With that if somebody really takes the time mm-hmm. and, and, and navigate through this and really see who's there and take my story and somebody else's story on the Move With platform, yep. their life could be changed for forever. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm so excited about this and I encourage, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, everybody just, just give it a chance. Yeah. Just give it a shot. You know what I mean? And I, and I, guarantee, I promise you, 100% guarantee that you will come out stronger mm-hmm. and, and, and you will come out such a better more a better person mm-hmm. and, and, and purpose and and find your path mm-hmm. and, and find your way and and, and and you can do it through fitness and, and, yeah. and fitness is the key right you know movement what I mean? was your Mo- path. Mo- movement was my path movement saved me mm-hmm. movement saved my life yeah. and if I have an opportunity to give back to somebody give them show them the platform to save my life mm-hmm. then it can save somebody else's life that's beautiful yeah 
All right, you know I gotta ask. Yes. Uh, what's your power move? The yeah. move that makes you feel most powerful. Yeah, uh, my power move I would say running. <laughs> as simple as that, running w without legs. You know, <laughs> as crazy as it sounds. It's hard to top that. Yeah, it's hard to top that. But but running on prosthetic devices and really it goes back to you know what I mean, trying to be the fastest man in the world. Being when I was being told I would never never really walk. Mm -hmm. So I guess the power move by running is, is the power move is doing the impossible. Mm. Um, doing what people thought that I never could ever do. And that's yeah. by running. Awesome. Yeah.